Thank you, uh, Councilmember Bracken. Um, tonight we have uh, citizen comments as well as a public hearing. First, we will take citizen comments. If you're here to speak uh, regarding the petitions for uh, related to parking, that's following public comments. So we'll now open up uh, the agenda for any citizen comments other than those regarding the petitions that will be discussed in the public hearing. Anyone that would like to make general public comments to any one of them. Okay, hearing none, we'll close the citizen comment period and now move to item 4.0 on the public hearings. And item 4.1 is uh, an on-street parking permit petition for Canyon Center Parkway. Uh, Mike Johnson, our Economic Development Director. Mike, you wanna introduce that? Yes, thank you, Mayor. So the uh, first permit parking petition of the two tonight is on Canyon Center Parkway. The graphic here shows the extent of that, which uh, is, is primarily located directly adjacent and in front of the, uh, the residential subdivision that is part of the Canyon Center project and expands just slightly to the north along Canyon Center Parkway. The summary of the request is to establish a permit parking area on Canyon Center Parkway adjacent to the Canyon Center single family neighborhood uh, for the purpose of uh, establishing a protected area for on-street parking for guests, visitors, deliveries, uh, services, et cetera, um, for the residents that live in that subdivision and also for trash receptacle placement for the residents uh, uh, on garbage day. There are 18 affected properties uh, that would be uh, fully or partially affected by this request. Uh, 14 of them signed the petition, uh, which is 78%, 51% signatures is required uh, to, uh, to be considered by the city council. These are photos from the petition that, that uh, show the petitioner's uh, rationale or justification, um, which really centers around uh, demonstrating that there are commuter vehicle uh, parking, which is parking that does not originate from the residents of an area uh, that uh, are consistently parked in front or, or along the area that's proposed for petition. So these photos show uh, winter parking conditions, um, the, uh, the, the kind of the extent of the trash pickup on uh, collection day of 17 homes, each with uh, at least two receptacles takes up quite a bit of space. Uh, various construction vehicles parking along that, that roadway in front of the development. And then parking within the development itself is very limited. Um, so, so guest parking and, and visitor and delivery parking is, is not um, entirely feasible within the project. So after analysis, the staff finds that the proposal reasonably complies with the criteria of the permit parking ordinance. And those criteria emphasize and focus on the presence of commuter vehicle parking. That's, that's pretty much it for the criteria. So that's what we're looking at there. The council obviously considers uh, the impact beyond those criteria. Uh, the petition uh, had enough signatures, they were validated. So it meets the, the requirement for public hearing and council consideration. Um, staff finds that the granting the request would reasonably resolve the current issue with trash collection and visitor parking limitations in the area. Um, Focusing specifically on winter parking and ski traffic, there is a, a, a new public parking structure just um, within the project that we would certainly as a city encourage the public to utilize rather than the on-street parking in front of the neighborhood. So there is an alternative there. Uh, and then staff has previously met with residents regarding the existing conditions, um, hearing that over the years as Canyon Center has developed, uh, including recent roadway restriping that was completed by the developer at the city's request um, to, to help address this concern. So uh, in staff's analysis, there is clear finding that there is commuter vehicle parking present in this area. And then as discussed in the work session and uh, in the council packet, the police department is opposed to the creation of this permit parking area uh, due to concerns over 
restricting parking on public roads and, and legal concerns with the permit parking ordinance uh, in general. Uh, so that is the, the staff report for this item. The process will be to take public hearing tonight and then the council is required to uh, render a final decision within 30 days from the hearing. So that will be scheduled for December 14th. Mike, we asked a question you were gonna check um, on that 30 day requirement. Yes. How, how soon, if there's questions or issues and the 30 day requirement is not met in favor of the residents or vice versa, yeah. what's the time frame of- To reapply? Yeah. So, so Shane, I may need a little input here. It does not stipulate or clarify in the ordinance if an application is denied, how soon uh, it can be resubmitted or amended and resubmitted. I don't know if we have a default. I don't, I don't know of a default. I think that in the absence of a, of a uh, cooling off period, why I think they could do it almost immediately. Okay, so, so no clear delay in the ordinance. Uh, maybe I, I may. I, I have two questions. Number one, that that would be as we had discussed, uh, possibly bringing some changes to that time frame and clarifying that. Maybe that's a another point you may want to add to that list of things sure. to consider. Um, the other one that, and I forgive me for not asking this in the work session, but, um, is this particular group of homes eligible for short-term rentals? No, they are not. Because they, th this is a private driveway, so all these units technically front on a public street, okay. and short-term rentals are not allowed. Okay, that, and that might be something else to just make sure when we go to look at ordinance, make sure that that, I get, that the private roads, it may, there may not be some overlap, but it's just mm -hmm. a, it's just a thought. Sure. Yeah, let's make sure we cover that with the ordinance as well. Yeah, thank you. All right, any further questions of Mike before we take uh, public hearing comments? Very nice. Thank you, Mike. And uh, we would now entertain, uh, uh, we'll open up the public hearing on item 4.1, uh, on-street parking permit petition for Canyon Center Parkway. Anyone in the audience would like to speak to this petition? Please uh, you know, state your name and make your comments. My name is uh, Robert Troush. I'm a resident at the um, 7392 Parkway. Um, the, the one other just item that I don't think was covered that was also concerned is, um, as everyone knows in this room, the Marriott opened up across the street. Um, and the Marriott, we've uh, since I, I watch it every day, there's probably at least a minimum on average about five um, large moving vans, um, motor homes, things like that. They're currently parking in the uh, land, I guess it's gonna be the future park and and I guess where the turnaround for the office building is. Um, they don't fit in the garage. There is garage parking, as you know, for the Marriott, but these are very large. So I think the one other aspect that is going to impact us is going to be, they're gonna to have to park you know, in those um, parking spaces out on the street, and that's gonna further impact our you know, uh, ability. So that's just the one other item I think should be emphasized. All right, thank you. Someone else would like to speak to this petition. Hi, um, Mary Ellen. Mary Ellen Van England Hoven. This is kind of related to it, but as you come out of Canyon Center Parkway, there's all these cars that park right up next to the street as you're turning right or left and you can't see. And several people in our neighborhood have almost gotten hit. So my proposal is, could we have some red curb on Racket Club uh, Drive that surrounds Canyon Center Parkway so no one can park there? It's a safety issue. There is a stop sign there, but we're gonna have some problems there if that's not addressed along with those signs for the resident parking. Where, where are you saying as it comes from Canyon Center on to? On the Racket Club Drive. Yeah. You should have a clear view. Yeah, absolutely. No. Cars, um, but currently, cars are parking right up to the curb. You can't see. I mean, other people will say this is, this is their problem too. 
people like you who've lived there for a million years yeah. experience and, and, that. Yeah. yeah, and and with all this influx of building in there and people traffic, it's just going to get worse. Good point. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Even though that's outside this petition, but it's right there. But it's related, and we need to take note of that. Thank you. Welcome. Come on up. Hi, thanks, uh, Brad McCleary. I'm from Canyon Center Parkway. I submitted the petition, and I just want to make one point as well. We did get the striping done. We appreciate that. All that though has since come off. It was I don't know. It was the paint or what? So there's nothing there. There's no crosswalk. There's no anything there to designate that it shouldn't be somewhere where someone parks. I mean. Besides the commuters and when other people are there, one of the bigger concerns too is like we have nowhere to have our garbage picked up. You can't pull a truck into the complex, pick it up and you know, have it serviced. So for us, I don't know where else we're gonna do it or how that's gonna work. Right. So anyway, thank you. Oh, that's a very valid point and the pictures demonstrate that. So appreciate that. Other comments regarding this petition? Any comments, questions from the council? Um, no, on, on the garbage, that's, uh, you know, there needs to be uh, space on the street to put the garbage out. I mean, that helps both. Um, an alternative to that would be a no parking on, for example, Tuesday night, Wednesday on on garbage day. I'm, I'm not saying that that's the way I feel. I'm just saying that that would be a, an alternate for that specific issue. So we have um, a fire hydrant right there too, somewhere. I remember. Um, yeah, there, that's there's 34 garbage cans. If any of them have the extra services, that can be a lot, and it will take that whole area. So, uh, at least speaking, my due diligence for yeah. the Wasatch Front Waste and Recycling Board. Yeah, Tim, go ahead. Um, and this probably has been emphasized already by Mike and me, or maybe yourself, but. Tonight, as far as the process, once the hearing is closed, the decision isn't going to be made tonight, just so people are aware of that. It will come most likely at the next meeting for a decision. We have to hold the hearing and then deliberate and, and have a decision at a different time. I right. just want to make sure that was clear. Yep, and that's why we have the 30-day issue. But appreciate that clarification. And uh, uh, I appreciate staff's uh, thoroughness in identifying the parameters set forth in the ordinance and the fact this petition generally meets those conditions. Now it'll be up to the council to see if there's any other mitigating circumstances that uh, they want to fully understand. But I think taking the public comment, staff's information that's been shared with us, um, um, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm impacted or not impacted, but I, I feel the, the challenge of having so many non-residents parking in that area. Uh, we do have precedents set for the same issue on uh, Ferguson Canyon near the rec center. Um, so it's and uh, even around the high school. So it's something we looked at and I think we need to be sensitive to that and just make sure that it fits well and the public safety does not see any unnecessary hazards and those types of things. But uh, we'll take all that into consideration and hopefully take a position. Well, we need to take a position of some sorts uh, by our next meeting. All right, uh, we'll close the public hearing on uh, the permit petition for Canyon Center Parkway. We also have uh, a permit petition for Racket Club Circle, but I understand that application has been revised. So Mike, you wanna mentioned where yes. that stands. Thank you, Mayor. This is the original petition request. This is um, the, the request for which public notices went out and, and the staff review was done. Um, I will very briefly go through this, but this has changed as of this morning. Um, the, the purpose here um, in reading the petition seemed to be more to preserve the safety and integrity of the neighborhood. Uh, in response to ongoing and future development at Canyon Center, uh, just more uh, traffic and and commuters in the area. Um, the the photos submitted in the petition, though, were were only uh, photos along Racket Club Drive, and that 
that on street parking has been well documented. We've been well aware of that. Cars have been parking on, on Racket Club Drive for many years now. Um, what we were not able to find in our review and don't have a previous experience of as staff is a, a major commuter vehicle parking issue within the majority of the area, which is Racket Club Circle. Um, so, so in our analysis of this, and it's more detailed in the staff report, which has been sent to the council as well as the petitioner, um, because a majority of this request is on Racket Club Circle and that there does not appear to be an existing commuter vehicle parking, uh, parking issue in, in Racket Club Circle. And we're aware that cars are turning around in there, but, um, but this is specifically parking. We find that the, the original request um, failed to, to reasonably comply with the ordinance criteria here. However, as of this morning, we received an updated petition um, that has substantially expanded the, the requested area and really changed the analysis and the, the scope of this and, and now includes many of the homes on the west side of Racket Club Drive. Um, because we just received this this morning, um, we obviously didn't have time to do a full review of this. Uh, to verify the new signatures received and, and to, um, to notice the, the new affected property owners for tonight. Um, so what we are um, recommending is that we hold off on this public hearing because the petition has changed substantially um, to allow time for staff to do a new full review of this and essentially treat this as a, a new petition received. Uh, do a new review, uh, prepare new notices, um, notify the, the new affected property owners and come back at a subsequent council meeting, uh, take public hearing then, um, so we can have time to review the, the new scope of this petition. All right, thank you, Mike. Uh, hopefully the audience didn't come to uh, give uh, comments on the Racket Club Circle petition because we will do that later. And I think uh, I'm one who can speak to Racket Club Drive as being a problem for 30, 40 years. So that's definitely something that is worth considering and brings substance to the petition. So that will be looked at as far as a public hearing once staff has reviewed that. Any comments from council before we move forward? Um, no, I, as was discussed, just for those that may be here interested in this was uh, the suggestion was made in the, in the work session that we possibly wait I don't know what uh, Mike's time frame was, but we may wait until January to have that uh, public hearing simply so that the new mayor and council people would also be able to hear that and make a decision on. The we'll see what staff recommends and, and, and what and certainly works. the notification goes out again. Yeah, but anyway, it's uh... It's something that uh, we'll fast track uh, along with both of them and uh, try and respond in a timely fashion, especially as we approach uh, the ski season and such. So thank you, everyone. So uh, we'll close uh, the public hearing uh, agenda items, 4.1 or 4.2, and uh, appreciate everyone's attendance. And we will now move to our action items for this evening. You're welcome to stay and listen to all those if you would like. Um, see how, how fast Doug and I can go through this. Item uh, 5.1 is consideration of Ordinance 371, adopting a parks, trails, and open space master plan element to the general plan. Uh, Mike Johnson, you want to introduce that quickly? I know we've been through it a few times. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. This is a citywide master plan um, that, that makes goals and recommendations for uh, city leadership and, and staff to set policies and goals and um, priorities in the future regarding parks, trails, and open space citywide. Um, it's, it's been through an extensive public input process from uh, over the last several years, um, from public open houses to planning commission hearings to um, a council hearing, which, uh, which yielded a lot of public feedback that resulted in some, some positive changes to the plan. Um, so now it, it, it's back, it's received positive recommendations from the planning commission and the open space committee. Um, even after the, the changes made to the previously uh, identified Little Cottonwood Creek future trail, which has now been relocated. Um, but, but the plan's the result of, of many years of, of research and work and, and public input to really set a vision for the future of parks, trails, and open space in the city. Thank you, Mike. Uh, of course, I'm excited for this. Um, 
course, parks, trails, and open space is uh, my passion. So I'm excited to see this uh, be uh, updated and be a part of the general plan. Any comments before we call for a vote? I appreciate the adjustments made to that uh, that little Conway uh, Creek Trail was uh, right through uh, District 2 and 1. Um, and so uh, I appreciate uh, the, the, the addition there in response to public input. And I would uh, move that we approve Order 371. Okay, it's been moved by Councilmember Bracken. Do we have a second? I second that, Mayor. And second by Councilor Peterson. Any final comments? I'd like to thank the uh, planning I'm for making those changes as well. I think it's a good plan to get it where it's more likely to get there sooner on that new pathway. And it uh, it is uh, it's probably one of the things that I've received the most phone calls on was was that uh, trail original proposal. And I'm so grateful that. Uh, that the changes were made. Thanks so much. All right, uh, uh, I'll call for the vote. Uh, Councillor uh, Peterson. Yes. Councillor Bracken. Yes. And I will vote yes. And council members <clears throat> Bruce and Michael are excused. The next item is 5.2, consideration of resolution 202156, approving entry into a consulting agreement with TO engineers regarding stormwater system services analysis. Matt, you want to introduce that quickly? Yeah, Mayor and Council, this is phase one, if you will, of the investigation of our stormwater system. We've had this uh, during our master planning study. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, one of the things that is identified is we have quite a few manholes that are covered, and we don't have a lot of good uh, survey data on those manholes that we have available in order to develop a, uh, a uh, stormwater model. So this is the first phase of that. And this funding is from the uh, Recovery Act money, as you are aware. And we are recommending approval with TO engineers to begin that process. All right. Thank you, Matt. Any <coughs> final comments, questions of Matt? I know we've discussed this in our uh, Work session. Raising manholes is something we've been doing since incorporation of the city. I think we've got about 800 done. We have a couple hundred more to go. So um, it's uh, certainly good to have access to the system. Would uh, move to the resolution 2021. It's moved by Councilor Bracken. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Second by Council Member Peterson. Any final comments? I'll call for the vote. Uh, Council Member Peterson? Yes. Council Member Bracken? Yes. And I will vote yes. And Council Member Bruce and Michael are excused. The next item is resolution 2021 57, approving an updated affordable housing plan. Um, Mike, you want to? introduce that just yes thank you mayor this was uh this is an annual requirement of cities uh we adopted a affordable housing master plan in 2019 and then every year we're required to provide updated uh, community housing information including housing supply housing demand median income um a five-year outlook on on rental properties within affordability bands uh, so we have done that that was discussed in detail in the work session um, and then an update on the the implementation of the strategies identified in that original master plan, which we have also provided. And this was required to be submitted by December 1st each year. Thank you, Mike. And again, this is something that's done every year. And uh, I, I think for the audience, the data we're using for this update is data from 2019. Hopefully going forward, we'll have even better data to be even more accurate, but uh, we use the uh, data that was available. Any final comments, questions from the council? Hearing none, I'd call for a motion. I move that we approve 2021-57. It's been moved by Councilor Peterson. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Councilor Bracken. Any final comments, questions? Hearing none, I'd call for the vote. Councilor Bracken. Yes. 
Councillor Peterson. Yes. And I will vote yes, and Councillor Bruce and Michael are excused. Next item is 5.4, consideration of a resolution 2021-58, appointments to the Arts Council. <clears throat> City Manager Tim T, you wanna introduce those two names? Sure, um, Paula Melger and Ann Etchell and myself had the opportunity to meet with um, both of these individuals that have a strong interest in serving on the Arts Council, Amanda Babcock, and Sierra Powers, and we feel like their background and um, their time in our community, uh, including the background of, of living in the community and the things that they can bring forward to the board will really add value. So I'm recommending approval of appointing both of these two individuals and we're excited to have them on board. Thank you, Tim. And uh, the city has, of course, several committees and uh, uh, staff with a lot of excellent and talented volunteers from our city. So we're excited to include a couple more. Any final questions, comments from the council? We're working with the Arts Council. I find it, uh, it's very gratifying to see the help that we get through these volunteers. And I'm, I move that we approve 2021-58 to uh, have these wonderful women help, help our Arts Council move forward. Certainly second that. It's been moved by Councillor Peterson, seconded by Councillor Bracken. Any final comments? Do not call for the vote. Councillor Peterson? Yes. Councillor Bracken? Yes. And I will vote yes. Next item is resolution 2021-59, approving entry into an agreement with Salt Lake County for tier two uh, ZAP funding. I think that's for the Arts Council, and it's for $14,000, something that we do each year, and we're always looking for outside resources to help our city. Any questions or comments regarding that uh, resolution accepting those funds? We'll always take you money. for the Arts Council, so you make the motion. I move that we uh, approve 2020 2021-59. Uh, I will second that. It's been moved by Councilmember. It's been moved by Councilor Peterson, seconded by Councilor Bracken. Any final comments? Very none. I'll call for the vote. Uh, <clears throat> Councilor Bracken. Yes. Councilor Peterson. Yes. And I will vote yes. <clears throat> The next item of business is um, item 5.6, consideration resolution 2021, accepting requests for indemnification. Uh, Shane, do you wanna introduce that please? Uh, sure, a uh, lawsuit in federal court was filed against uh, three Conwood Heights uh, Police Department officers in, in late October. Uh, concerning their response to a, a domestic disturbance in the city in December of uh, 2019, I think it was a couple of years ago. Um, under the Governmental Immunity Act of Utah, uh, city employees who are sued uh, concerning uh, the performance of, of their uh, uh, functions, their, their job functions have the right to request defense and indemnity from the from the city. Um, and so that has happened here. These three officers have all filed a request for defense and indemnity with the city, which the city is uh, required to accept unless the city is uh, sure that, uh, that uh, their, uh, the, the uh, actions complained of are outside, were outside of the course and scope of their employment, which is not the case here. So uh, in this case, uh, as, as is the city's habit, I'm uh, suggesting that the council uh, approve these requests for defense and indemnity 
uh, but with a reservation of rights, which is, is customary uh, to the effect that if the city subsequently determines that uh, these officers were acting outside of, of uh, the scope of their employment, then uh, the city can withdraw um, its defense and indemnity in the case. Uh, thank you, Shane. Uh, appreciate that clarification introduction. And I think this is fairly standard. We've done this before. And again, that term reservation of rights is critical in, in this action and that it uh, assures the, the council that as long as they were functioning within their duties, that that's fine. If not, then we reserve the right to come back. So any final comments, questions from the council? No, I don't think we approve as of 2021. It's been moved by Councilmember Brack and do I have a second? It's been moved and seconded. Any final comments? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. Councillor Bracken. Yes. Councillor Peterson. Yes. And I will vote yes. And Councillor Bruce and Michael are excused. The next item is 5.7. Uh, considering resolution 2021-61 approving civil asset forfeiture legal services in a local agreement with Salt Lake County. And uh, is that Shane or Robbie going to introduce this? Rock, paper, Shane rock, paper, it better than I can. Right, Shane, go ahead. Um, federal and state law allows uh, um, basically government to seek forfeiture of certain assets that are uh, used or the fruits of certain criminal enterprises, such as uh, drug, drug trafficking, things like that. Robbie could, could fill out the list, I'm sure, much better than, than me. But um, um, the, the assets are not automatically forfeited. The, the issue has to go before a court and the judge has to make a decision on that. So there is a process for these civil forfeiture actions to occur. State law requires that the uh, actions be uh, uh, pursued by only uh, the attorney general's office or the uh, or, or a district attorney's office. Um, however, recently state law was changed to uh, um, require the seizing agency to pursue those those uh, forfeiture actions, uh, uh, and so the purpose of this resolution is to approve an interlocal agreement whereby the city will uh, retain uh, the Salt Lake County District Attorney's Office to pursue uh, forfeiture actions where the city is the seizing agency. Thank you, Shane. I know we went through this again in our work session and uh, I appreciate that ongoing clarification on items like this. Any questions, comments from the council? Hearing none, I'd entertain a motion for approval. Move to be approved resolution 2021-61. It's been moved by Councillor Bracken. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Second by Councillor Peterson. No comments, thoughts? Hearing none, I'd call for the vote. Councillor Peterson? Yes. Councillor Bracken? Yes. And I will vote yes. And Councilmember Bruce and Michael are excused. Uh, referring to the agenda, it says on the agenda that we have a consent calendar. Those minutes are not ready, so we'll move that to our next meeting. Any final comments, thoughts from the council? Hearing none, I would entertain a motion to adjourn and send you home. Or you can stay here. I would like to second that, Mayor. Did I hear a motion? I'll, I'll move that we we uh, adjourn. adjourn. Adjourn? I'll second. Okay, it's been moved by Council Member Peterson that we adjourn and second by Council Member Bracken. All in favor say aye. 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 It's unanimous. In case I get hit by We're adjourned. Side, then, you know, someone's going to have to do that.